Focus your desires on staying with the breath. Well, too often we hear that the Buddha badmouths desire and calls it the cause of suffering. But not all desires cause suffering. Some desires are part of the path, like the desire to get the mind in a good state, a sense of well-being with the breath, breathe in a way that feels good. And if it doesn't feel good, then have the desire to figure out how to make it feel good. You can try longer breathing, shorter breathing, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. Take some time to get to know the breath, and try to occupy your body right here. In other words, any thoughts that go outside of the body, just let them be. You don't have to continue them. You don't have to, as they say in Thai, you don't have to continue the weave. Thoughts will come up. That's normal. But you don't have to get involved with them. Instead, you want to have a sense of being fully here in the body, from the head down to the feet, all around, with a sense of the breath energy in the body is flowing well, down the spine. We're not talking air here, we're talking just a sense of movement, energy. Think of things flowing well. After all, the blood is flowing around the body. All these different fluids are flowing around. And the impulses are flowing through the nerves. And try to be sensitive to that. We tend to block those things out because we think we have more important things to think about. But right now there's nothing else you have to think about, nothing else you have to do. Just be right here with this sensation of having a body and breathing comfortably. You're creating a whole world here around this desire. There's a sense of you inhabiting the body. And in Buddhist terminology, that's called a becoming. As the Buddha said, the desires that lead to becoming can cause suffering, but you have to create a sense of becoming to make a path. The path requires developing a lot of things, and it's based on desire. There's the desire and right effort, and there's the desire and right resolve. You want to create a happiness that doesn't harm anybody. Doesn't harm you, doesn't harm the people around you. Happiness that leaves the mind clear, unlike the happiness, say, that comes from gaining sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations that you really like, or things that you can fantasize about. Those things can be pleasant, but they, they leave their imprint on the mind, and they can cloud the mind. What we want is a clear mind that's just fully present right here. this world that we're creating right here inside the body, you're, you're inhabiting the body fully, is going to have to be fighting against other worlds that the mind tends to create. It's creating these little worlds all the time. So you have a desire for pizza. All of a sudden, you are the person who's going to eat the pizza, and you're the person who's going to get the pizza. And the parts of the world that are relevant are the parts that either help you get the pizza or get in the way. Other identities that you could take on at that time are just not relevant. They disappear in that world. And things that aren't relevant to the pizza world, those get pushed into the background, even though they're out there. But then when the desire for pizza is gone, another desire will come in and you'll have a new you and a new identity and a new world. And the mind likes doing this. You give it some free time, it can fantasize all kinds of worlds, which is a danger right now. It sees that. You're just here with the breath, and it looks like an empty space of time. You could fill it with all kinds of fantasies. So you've got to strengthen your resolve, to strengthen your determination. You're not going to go with any place else but right here, the sense of you inhabiting the body. And the five qualities of the Buddha says strengthen this sense of this becoming that you've got here. That's part of the path. The first is conviction. Conviction that the Buddha really knew what he was talking about. He really was awakened. He really did see that your actions are important. They shape your life, and they don't 
totally shape things in the present moment, because after all, you have to live with the results of past actions. But you do have some choice in how you shape the raw material coming in from the past. So you hold that in conviction. You don't have any proof yet, but it's a good thing to believe, and it's a, it's an assumption, a working hypothesis you need in order to get the mind to settle down and feel that settling the mind down is a good thing. It's possible, and it's a good use of your time. The other strength that's related to that is discernment. When you see that you're creating suffering for yourself anywhere, you want to look into it. We talk about seeing things in terms of the Four Noble Truths, and it's, it sounds kind of exotic and formal, but it's actually something very close to what we do a lot of the time with other things that we find are problems. We try to figure out what the problem is and then what's the cause. And is it possible to solve it? And if so, what can you do? That's the structure for the Four Noble Truths. It's simply that we now apply it to the problem of the suffering you're causing yourself right here, right now. Both of these strengths, conviction and discernment, relate to the Buddha's insight on the second and third knowledge that he had on the night of his awakening. In that second knowledge, he saw that people die and are reborn, and they go to worlds based on their actions, and the actions are based on their views. In other words, the worlds you experience come from your way of paying attention to things or the views you hold about things, and then the intentions and actions that are based on that. And so the conviction and the discernment here are the, the views, the way you pay attention to things. The things you see are as important, the things that you see should be put in the background. And then the intentions, the actions, those come on the other strengths. Persistence, mindfulness, concentration. This is what you've got to do based on what you believe or are convinced, convinced of and on the principle of cause and effect that you discern. You see that the best thing to do is to shape a state of mind that is harmless, a state of mind that is skillful. And so anything that comes up, comes up in the mind that's going to go against that, you want to put it aside. And you want to prevent it from coming up, if, if possible. As for the qualities that will get the mind in a concentration, okay, you want to develop those. And once they're there, you want them to develop further. That's what persistence is all about. Mindfulness is keeping this in mind. It's not simply being aware of things without judging them. You actually are judging things. Figure out what's useful to stay with, and they're remembering that, trying not to forget. The Buddha talks about having four frames of reference. And they're all relevant to what we're doing as we're trying to get the mind into concentration. Because what is a concentrated state of mind? It's your awareness filling the body with a sense of well-being. Okay, you've got mind, body, and feeling. Those are three of the frames of reference. And then there's dhammas, which are various ways of seeing if the mind and body and feelings are out of balance. What can you do to bring them back into balance? What qualities need to be abandoned, like the hindrances? What qualities need to be developed? the factors for awakening, what needs to be comprehended. The fact that you've got clinging to things that are causing you suffering, you want to comprehend that. So you get the mind into concentration. And then as the mind does settle down, you find yourself thinking about your object, which is the breath, and evaluating how well it's going. This is a necessary stage in the concentration because you've got to get that sense of well-being that you're going to develop, develop through the breath to permeate the whole body. The Buddha's image is of a bathman. Back in those days, they didn't use bars of soap. They'd had a bath powder, and you'd mix it with water and get kind of a dough that you would then rub over your body. And so the bathman would have to mix the dough in the same way that we'd mix dough for bread. You take the powder, you mix it with the water, and you knead the water through the dough until you got the soap that you wanted. So the water didn't drip out, and there was none of the bath powder that was not moistened. So we want to have that same attitude toward 
letting the sense of pleasure and ease spread through the body. And wherever it seems to be recalcitrant, it's not cooperating, what can you do to get around it? One way is to just, just envision that even if there's a feels like a blockage in the body, it's porous. Think of all those atoms that go to make up the body. There's a huge amount of space in the atoms, between the atoms. Well, think of the, the breath energy flowing through those spaces. Don't let the perception of a solid block get in the way. If there are places where there's tension in the body, allow it to relax. The relaxation of the muscles of the body helps to get that sense of energy flow more constant, smoother, more pleasant. And as you get this sense of well-being, this becoming that you're creating here is a lot stronger. It's able to re resist the temptation to go off thinking about something else, because it feels really good. The mind feels nourished, it feels clear. It can inhabit the whole body. There's no part of the body that's pushing it out. If you find there are little islands in your sense of the body that don't cooperate quite yet, well, just work around them. Make the majority of the body as comfortable as you can. And this way you've created a sense of well-being, a becoming here that's strong, that enables you to stay on the path. So even though eventually we have to go beyond becoming, we have to learn how to use becoming to do that. It's by learning to study this process of becoming as we work in concentration that we actually get deeper and deeper levels of discernment. As in so much else in life, you learn not by memorizing, you learn by doing. So this is what we do right now. This is our karma right now, good karma, karma in the present moment. We want to make that power we have to shape things work to our advantage. So any thoughts that come up that doubt the value of this, say, no, the Buddha knew what he was talking about. Take that as your working hypothesis. And as he said, the, the key to understanding things is to understand how the mind creates suffering. Even though it wants happiness, but it creates suffering for itself. You want to look into that. Why is that happening? That's the problem you want to solve. And you do that by getting the mind into concentration. It's when the mind is in concentration that it can see these things a lot more clearly. So you want to take this state of becoming and make it strong. So can learn new habits and withstand its old habits with confidence that it's on the right path, a path that goes someplace, goes to the realization of what it is in the mind that doesn't suffer, that's not weighed down by anything at all. That's the place this goes to. It's not really a place, but it's a, it's the goal. But to find this goal requires strength of all these five qualities. Conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. Without these strengths, you never get there. And the choice to develop them is yours.